a lifetime of indoctrination, has given us a knee-jerk reaction to certain terms. Because the heliocentric globe is all we have ever known, when someone suggests that our creation is flat, we imagine some disk floating in outer space, perhaps with water flowing off the edge. This is not biblical cosmology. Such a conception is circulated by misinformation agents as a way to ridicule and discourage investigation of the subject. When it comes to how vastly different biblical cosmology is to the spinning space ball, an absence of curvature is just the tip of the iceberg. Here are five key aspects of biblical cosmology. One, the firmament and the waters. There is no outer space in the biblical model. The first chapter of Genesis and other scriptures describe our world as being encased within an immeasurable body of waters. These vast waters are referred to as the deep. On the second day of creation, God made the firmament to divide the waters which were below from the waters which were above, allowing for an inhabitable expanse in between. Even after the flood, these waters remain, for the psalmist David declared in his day, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Isaiah describes the firmament as being of a solid material that was stretched out as a curtain over the earth. The fact that the firmament is indeed a domed structure is confirmed by Isaiah's use of simile, comparing it to a tent to dwell in. Elihu described the sky as strong, likening it to a molten mirror. Such terminology proves that the Bible writers understood the firmament to be solid. 2. A circular face with ends The Bible repeatedly mentions that the earth has ends, and further, that it has a face. A sphere does not have ends, and it is the only shape without a face. The face of the earth is described as a circle when viewed from heaven above. The Hebrew word for circle, kug, does not indicate a sphere, as many would argue, for Isaiah used another Hebrew word, der, when referring to a ball. The Hebrew word kug is elsewhere translated compass. During our world's creation, God set a compass, or engraved a circle, upon the face of the depth. 3. Fixed upon foundations and pillars. While modern science claims that the Earth is moving through space at unbelievable speeds, the Bible declares that the Earth is presently established or fixed and that it shall not be moved. God himself said to Job that he laid the foundations of the Earth. It is also written that the pillars of the Earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. Pillars and foundations are structural components that must be firmly set in order to serve their purpose. This raises the question, whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? The Bible answers, He hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. This seemingly impossible feat of engineering, the earth being founded upon waters, was marveled at by Job, who declared, He hangeth the earth upon nothing. That is, nothing which affords stability as far as man is concerned. The structure of the heavens, the firmament, is also set on pillars, which are said to tremble at God's reproof. 4. The Divine Dwelling God's throne sits directly above the firmament. Just as the pillars of the earth are struck in the waters below, God likewise layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters which are above the earth. It is written, The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Being literally enthroned above our world, the Heavenly Father looks down from the height of his sanctuary. To illustrate the vertical vantage point God occupies, Isaiah states that men are as grasshoppers from God's view. 5. Geocentric, not heliocentric. According to Scripture, the sun, moon and stars are not millions of miles away, but are simply lights in the firmament of the heaven. 
Far from being a cluster of space rocks and burning gases roving in their own courses, the Bible teaches that these mysterious luminaries were made for the sole service of the earth, to give light upon the earth. Besides dividing day from night, the clockwork procession of these celestial wonders was to allow man to reckon seasonal changes and to mark the ages as they passed. During his battle with the Amorites, Joshua did not bid the earth, but the sun to stand still. David likewise understood that it is the sun which moves. He likened the sun to a strong man running a race, who untiringly circuits the heavenly track above. This fact is also supported by Solomon, who stated that after the sun goes down, it hasteth to the place where he arose. What are called planets are simply wandering stars. These luminaries traverse the heavens irregularly, wandering in retrograde motions above the Earth. Not being mentioned specifically during Creation Week, the wandering stars fall under the general category of stars, which God made on the fourth day. Unlike the cosmology of science falsely so-called, the creation model that the Bible describes needs no theoretical physics to support itself. It is so simple that a child can understand it. Yet Bible truth requires the faith of a child to be received. While the simple biblical model is in complete harmony with our own personal experience, its wonderful simplicity, in most cases, does not appeal to the pride of a grown man, and he passes it by, seeking some great thing in its place.